How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I'm here today to tell you why gear does matter. Hear me out. As a professional, I have the philosophy that equipment are just tools and you should pick the right tool for the job. A lot of people have become fixated on dreaming of the absolute latest camera technology or using anamorphic lenses for that sweet cinematic look. Cinematic. But as I've been saying for years, they're all just tools and each one should serve a specific purpose. For example, in the recent video I shot featuring the cooking content, I chose dual A7S III's because it's super lightweight for handheld work, easy to travel with, and has a budget-friendly rental price. Whereas for something like a higher-end commercial, I'd be more inclined to choose something like a RED or Alexa for the superior image fidelity, flexibility in post, and Super 35 sensor size. Honestly, I can care less about what camera I use, so long that it serves the story and my goals for the project. As my cinematography mentor so eloquently said, the camera's just a box. That being said, it's important to choose the right gear so you're not shooting yourself in the foot and working against your gear on the day. Sometimes you'll be thrown into a situation where you're handed a camera and just told to make something look good. But what happens what if your given isn't suited for your current workflow? Then you might start running into some issues. You can have the latest and greatest cinema camera with all the bells and whistles, but if you don't have the logistics to facilitate that workflow, you might want to reconsider. When you're working with larger cinema cameras, there's a lot more to consider, such as lensing, media, or filtration. Something as simple as having internal NDs can be the difference in whether or not you make a shot when you're traveling from an interior to exterior location. Another big consideration is power. What is your power draw? How long does the battery last? What accessories do I need to power? Is there power available at the location? This is why I'm such a fan of Sony's newer cameras like the FX6 and FX9. They have everything I need in a relatively small package, so it's easy to keep the momentum moving when you need to stay nimble. But keep in mind, this idea isn't necessarily limited to cameras. It applies to any piece of equipment you use on set. Sometimes I want to key with a hard light. Sometimes I'll need to use multiple lavs instead of a boom. Sometimes I'll prefer an ergo rig over an easy rig. Again, different tools for different jobs. I wouldn't expect Bob Rice to paint an entire canvas with a single brush or have a carpenter construct a building with just a power drill. Now really quick, I want to mention this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community designed for creatives and is an amazing resource for people looking to further their craft. I'm a big proponent for quality information and Skillshare has thousands of online classes that encourage genuine growth. As an industry professional, I always have a constant hunger to learn and explore new techniques to push my work forward. As I mentioned later in this video, fundamentals serve as the foundation of quality work. DP Zach Mulligan has a great course covering the seven fundamentals of lighting, which are the same principles I actually use whenever I approach a scene. No matter the topic, there are thousands of other classes you might be interested in taking. Memberships are $10 a month, but if you're interested, use the link in the description to receive a free trial of Skillshare Premium. If you think about it, high-end DPs aren't just rolling a dice and picking a cinema camera off the shelf to shoot their movies because gear doesn't matter. They're doing weeks of meticulous testing before production even starts. A show like Ozark picked the Venice because of the smaller footprint and the psychological effects of a full-frame close-up, while a documentary like Free Solo used a C300 Mark II for its verite ergonomics while suspended thousands of feet in the air. Which, by the way, props to them because I could never. It seems the more I progress in my professional career, the more gear seems to matter, but only because I believe equipment should be evaluated on job per job basis. Now, I understand that 99% of people don't have the ability to just choose whatever they want to use, and at that point, you should use the best tool that's available to you. When you're first starting out, gear matters much less, so long as that you know the limitations of your equipment. Provided you have the right skill set, you should have the ability to make any image look good. In this sense, I do understand the sentiment of gear doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, any camera is a professional camera in my hands. Heck, a ton of my favorite visual creations were taking off a variety of smartphones, ranging from Androids to iPhones. A few years ago, I was filming for AWS during their yearly conference in Vegas. We were filming interviews at one of these satellite parties, which happened to be a nightclub. We get there, set up our lights, block our first interview, and security immediately shuts us down, saying that we can't film with professional cameras. Now, mind you, I'm using a standard FS7 camera package, so it's a decently sized camera. However, security also told us that we're able to use our smartphones. Again, I want to reiterate that any camera is a professional camera in my hands, and since the suits had taken this backhanded logic, we set up our lights, rolled on sound, and captured the interviews we needed. And when you look at the footage, it looks fine, and client was totally happy with it. 
When you have this mindset, gear matters much less, but what ultimately matters is your story, and the specific tools you choose to use should help you serve your story. Whenever I get asked for a cinema camera recommendation or which light to buy, my answer is always, it depends. It depends on what you're shooting. It depends on your story. It depends on your location. It depends on if you have a crew to facilitate that workflow. In the end, use the best tool for the job that's available to you and ask yourself, what are your project's needs and how does the equipment you choose help progress your goals? If you appreciate my content here on YouTube, I've recently started a Patreon to help support the channel and continue this conversation. There are a handful of exclusive perks, including a private Discord server where we have regular community hangouts, and soon I'm planning on hosting weekly watch parties. I've also recently started streaming on Twitch on my off days, so if you happen to catch me while I'm streaming, feel free to hang out and ask me any questions you have. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. The topic of gear is much more nuanced than most people think, and I'll always preach using the right tool for the job. As creators, we should remain format agnostic and not become laden to a particular camera brand or image format. They're all just tools to help us tell our story. As always, if you have any questions on this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.